Today I attended a flagship battle in Japan using Green Uta. So in this video, I'll be sharing with you how I did, my matchups, and of course my deck list. And another thing I will share is how to attend or join these events when you're in Japan. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Minotopia. Minotopia has generously sent me a box of the latest EB01 Memorial Collection booster box to open on the channel. I'll be opening the box while sharing with you more about them, but I'll only show you the hits. So Minotopia is an online store based in Japan where they sell anime products ranging from figures, mangas and of course TCG products. You can buy TCG products like the Pokemon TCG, the upcoming Dragon Ball Fusion TCG, the One Piece TCG and more. If you're looking for waifu figures and to read or collect some mangas, Minotopia got your back. For TCG fans, if you're living in the West, this is where you find Japanese boxes and even singles at an affordable price. And if you use my affiliate link below, you'll get 5% discount. And on top of that, you get a little something extra which you will surely appreciate. They also have an on-demand service where if the product that you're looking for is not in the store, they can try to find it for you in Japan. And they also ship worldwide. So thank you once again Minotopia for sponsoring this video and don't forget to use my affiliate link below to get additional 5% discount and extra goodies when buying from Minotopia. And now back to the video. So firstly if you want to join these events, you need to have the Bandai TCG app, you need to set your location to Japan of course, and then you need to pick out of 3 events which of these you want to join. So typically the more popular ones would be meetup sessions, standard battle and flagship battle. So for my case, I applied for the flagship battle and over here, there's a maximum number of slots for each event. So for my case, for this flagship event, there's a total of 64 slots, but there were over 1000 players that applied. So in this case, a lottery will be held. And if you win the lottery, then you get a slot here. But this is only typically usually for the flagship battle because these are very limited events compared to your standard battle or meetup sessions. Normally for those events, you don't need to um, do a lottery for it. And that is mainly how you apply or get a slot in the flagship battles. And for other events, it will really depend. And usually they have like a time period where you can apply. So for example, the flagship for next month, the application period will start this month. And usually it will be like a month long um, application period. So that's how you join an event in Japan. Next will be my deck list and my matchups for the flagship battle itself. So the deck list that you're looking at right now is what I use for the event. So in total there were 64 players, 5 rounds of Swiss, no top card and best of 1. And usually flagship events are between 16 to 32 people. So because there were 64 players today, Top 16 players will get the Perona and the first place will get a Mihawk. So these were my matches for today. I had my first match against Anel, followed by two Katakuri, one Sakazuki and lastly Nami. Okay, so for my first matchup against Anel, it was quite tough but uh, I think it was easy for Uta going up against Anel. Uh, the, deck, the deck build that I uh, played against was using the new event card um, I Am God. So it keeps spamming the 7 cost annual during the late stage of the game. But I ended up winning uh, with the help of 8 cost kit. I think 8 cost kit is really strong going up against yellow. So that is 1-0. I won my first match going into a second yellow game against Katakuri. It's a typical yellow game where he just keeps triggering and then he managed to drop 2 big mum. But because I guarded early in the game, I guarded really aggressively. I managed to survive even though he dropped two 10 cost big mum at the end of uh, during the later stage of the game. Uh, when he played down the big mum, I managed to survive and then protecting, constantly protecting my 8 cost kit. And then I ended the game by using I am invincible, the event card for Uta to swing for game. Going to third game, Katakuri again. So end up I win, I won this game with the help of, of course, 8 cost kit. He didn't manage to drop the 10 cost big mum mainly because I was being very aggressive this game I didn't gut as badly or I didn't gut as much as I did last game so it it turned out fine for me because he didn't manage to drop 10 cost mum dropping that 10 cost mum on his last turn would definitely be end game for him but he decided to play or try to play more risky try to get the reject try to uh, end the game earlier than that but unfortunately for him I managed to 
block all of his attack. Mainly, I have a lot of blockers. I was playing a lot of Blue Nose and of course the Uta and Luffy. So, impregnable wall. It, it was tough for him to get through my defenses and that was how he lost. So, right now, I'm 3-0 and against Yellow for this flagship event. Next would be Sakazuki. Sakazuki was a really close game. I mainly lost because I was short of one counter or 1k counter and if I had the I am invincible for during that turn or if I had drawn it earlier I would have won the game because I needed one attack just to push through he had a couple of blockers on board so I would think Sakazuki is winnable using Uta just that you need to build it accordingly maybe playing more of the I am invincible event 3 and 3 and 1 I might still make it to top 16 and this guy that I lost to he eventually got second place anyway Okay, then going into my fifth game, go, I went against Nami. So Nami doing Nami stuff, he, his top deck mode is really strong, almost similar to like how Yugi does it. So he ended up winning and he ended up getting 7th place. So both of my losses, they managed to pull me up and eventually I managed to get top, within top 16, 13th place. So I got this Perona. Okay, so this Perona is a little different. Uh, as you can see on screen, I'm comparing it to the Asia version. There's no Asia text here. Here's my deck list again. Cards that I will remove would be maybe a couple of Bluno. It's really useless when you're going up against yellow decks, mainly because they can just use the Amaru, the 2 million volt Amaru. And going up against Sakazuki decks, it can easily be removed. Going up against Gecko Moria, they can easily remove because it's a 2 cost character. Then cards I would add into the deck would be Hoodie Jones. I think Rush in this deck would be really strong. Maybe even adding Zoro, the one from OPO6, could be really good in this deck as well. And aside from that, I think I would still like to experiment more of this deck. I saw a list using Bonnie or the Supernova engine, which I might give it a try. When I get any results, I'll share it on Twitter. Also, right now, if you didn't know already, I'm currently in Japan. So, uploads will be slower. But the next few videos should be some Japan related. And, okay, so since I'm already here, right, next video I'll be doing a haul video. I went to the cross store and then a couple of cut shops. And I'll be showing you what I got. There will definitely be a second video for a haul video. So, keep a lookout for that. So if you've enjoyed this content, let me know in the comments and give this video a like. Also, let me know what you think of Green Uta. I'm quite curious to know because I've been playing a lot of Peruna lately and I think Peruna has been doing really badly for me. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter as well for more One Piece TCG content. Link is in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.